Uh, welcome to this first of hopefully many conversations around attention. Um, this is uh, being led by the Task Force on Measurement and, and Research from the IAB in MENA. Um, just so you know, the way that the task forces work is basically any member of the IAB can take part in a task force. The task force on measurement actually is about 30 different people from about 18 different companies. So really a wide range of um, interests and um, uh, in, you know, in, input that's available uh, for pulling together um, workshops such as this. So this is very much that we see the first of many discussions and outputs around attention. We're very fortunate today to be able to welcome Andy Brown, who is the CEO of the Attention Council, who will be spending a little bit of time giving us their perspective on attention, whether it's a potential uh, currency, for example, you know, how it should be measured, why it should be measured, and the learnings that, that they experience. You'll have a, a moment or two to ask uh, Andy a couple of questions uh, after his session, but if we can keep that short, because we have a, an esteemed panel of local uh, experts from a variety of different companies to follow up that discussion and talk a little bit about the implications for that in our region and what we're seeing around the attention debate in our market. That'll be led by Abdul Nabi from uh, UM. He'll be joined by Mehdi from L'Oreal, representing the advertiser space, from Wasim from Nissan United, which is the uh, Nissan uh, joint um, uh, agency between the creative and media and how those two things work together or don't, as the case might be, to drive attention. We have Sri from Nielsen talking about the perspective of measurement and MMMs in particular, uh, Mathieu from the Schwerer Group representing the publisher space, and Chris from Omnicom Media representing uh, the media space, and they've done a lot of work uh, uh, around attention in that space as well. So without much more ado, I'm going to hand over to Andy now, um, uh, who can talk us through a little bit about the perspective that they have on attention from the Attention Council. Thank you very much, Andy, and welcome to the very first uh, discussion uh, in MENA. It's wonderful to have you amongst us. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Rick. Thanks for the intro, Ian. Um, it's great to be connected uh, with a number of the people again, um, former colleagues, industry colleagues on the call. Uh, hello, and great to meet the people that I don't know. Um, in a pre I used to have a previous life. I I worked for many years at, in at Kantar uh, around the audience uh, and media measurement space. So my background is is sort of comes out of media uh, measurement. And I, I guess let me let me share my screen with you, and uh, we will uh, go through uh, the deck that I've prepared. Um, now let me see if I can get it full screen. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Where are we doing it? Where are we now? Let's have a look. Uh, can folks see that? Are people seeing the full screen? Can you just somebody just nod or wave or do something that that indicates that that that's there? That yes, we can, great. Andy. Lovely. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> three little caveats before I start. Uh, one is I'm, I've got a fairly heavy cough and cold, and I'm slightly worried I'm going to break down into a into a coughing fit. So I apologise in advance. Uh, secondly, uh, my Wi-Fi has been a little bit spotty uh, this morning. So again, if there are, if there are any glitches, it, it that that's probably what it is in terms of the playthrough. And then thirdly, the my next door neighbour but one is having their house completely refitted, and the builders are doing the majority of the work in the garden it would appear. Uh, and they also seem unable to talk at anything other than about 100 decibels. So if you hear some shouting or drilling, um, you'll know what it is. Okay. Uh, these are all the things that will distract uh, your attention. Um, that, that was a great intro for me. And, and, and what I picked up from it was the fact that we've got different uh, stages of evolution with different members on this call. Uh, in terms of their experience uh, with attention uh, and attention measurement. I, and I guess what I'm going to try and do in, in about 20 minutes is take you from a very basic uh, level, because I have to kind of assume almost like a zero base, uh, up to what I think some of the key uh, questions that are being asked, some of the uh, key initiatives that are taking place uh, in the industry. So we'll go from a fairly uh, rudimentary start into something that that is reasonably 
uh, advanced. So let me just make sure my slides are working. Great stuff. Right. Okay. Oops. Now they're going too fast. So I'm going to talk you through a bit about what the Attention Council is. I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, why do we measure attention, a little bit about how do we measure attention, and then you know, Ian posed this question about attention currency uh, and is it is it tending towards a currency? Uh, and we'll talk a bit about that as we go through. So what's the Attention Council? Well, actually, it, it started as a, a very small cabal of research people who are interested in attention measurement. Um, and that some of those were research vendors, some of those were clients. Uh, who were early adopters of attention metrics in their in their media planning and and creative development, uh, and and I guess over time what it's become is a is a not for profit multi stakeholder membership group. So it's not for profit. Uh, we have stakeholders, as you'll see in a minute, right the way across the ecosystem. I'm not here to represent the measurement uh, industry. I'm here representing the subject of measurement as opposed to the any any individual. Uh, member. Um, goal is to try and share best practice and educate the market around use of those metrics. It's also to work on things like quality standards, uh, training and development, which we'll talk about perhaps as we go through. But also, uh, I think it's really important that everybody understands that uh, attention measurement is not the finished article. And by that, I mean, it, it is evolving. It's, it's in evolution. Uh, there is a lot of work going on around getting deeper levels of understanding um, in academia as well. And so the Attention Council also has a partnership uh, with a number of academic institutions. To give you an idea of the membership, uh, the original members were, well, I guess, were the research vendors, but we've expanded it beyond that. And it's and, and I and I work on a part time basis with the Attention Council in order to build this out. So, you know, in terms of methodologies, I suppose it, it started with people who you might call gaze based uh, measurement using eye tracking. Uh, we've expanded it well beyond that now. So we have research, you know, more traditional research agencies. Uh, we have people doing things like galvanic skin response, uh, neuroscience, uh, et cetera. Uh, we've got most of the major whole coasts uh, involved as uh, members. Uh, and, and I think it's fair to say on, on the sell side, the earlier engagement was with digital uh, vendors. So we've got a number of the big digital uh, vendors. Um, but I think more recently, what's been quite interesting, and this is something we'll touch upon uh, as we go through the deck, is that we've seen kind of a shift more towards TV uh, clients getting engaged uh, with attention metrics. So. Uh, let, let, let's go through this in a bit, bit more detail. You know, this, this hopefully will become apparent. Um, you could probably, you know, you're, you're very capable of Googling this kind of stuff, but, you know, it, it, the attention economy, the background is that attention is, it works on the premise that attention is a scarce commodity. Um, many people link uh, this back to Herbert Simon, uh, who was a, a Nobel laureate psychologist, and he really tried to debunk the myth of multitasking that you can be doing and concentrating on two things at the same time. Um, and, as, and as we as we follow this through, um, you know, from a media point of view, th this has quite far reaching uh, consequences. And I guess it got picked up by Karen Nelson Field, most notably when she was at Arenberg Bass uh, before she launched uh, Amplified. And then others such as Loom and Adelaide and T-Vision, who, who I guess, it's fair to say probably productized it and industrialized it uh, for usage in the media uh, industry. And, and that is an ongoing process. That's still, that's still mo moving on. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that gaze or, or eye tracking is probably uh, the most widespread use uh, of attention uh, metrics. Uh, and it's being driven by things like, you know, eye cameras in laptop, or sorry, cameras in laptops, in tablets, mobile phones, taking advantage of that widespread technology. And by the way, consumers' uh, openness uh, to actually engage with such technology on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, as well as on a research uh, basis. But you also see things like, you know, these camera glasses, the things that 
you know you wear and you have cameras and uh, you could you can capture film uh, some technologies are built specifically for audience measurement slash attention measurement so if you look at t-vision uh, they've built something like a people meter in the sense that uh, it works on an audio matching uh, recognition system for TV content and ads. But what it also does is it has uh, a camera on top of the TV set, which is monitoring presence in the room, but also whether that presence has their head turned towards the TV set uh, or uh, looking somewhere else. Uh, during the content and during the ad breaks, uh, which is quite significant. Uh, neuroscience, uh, we, I think we're actually seeing a second wave of neuroscience. Uh, it became very popular probably about 15 years ago. Uh, there were a number of big ticket acquisitions, including, uh, you mentioned somebody from Nielsen was on, including Nielsen uh, bought a neuro business, um, uh, best part of, say, 15 years ago. And I think, and I think perhaps because of the focus around attention measurement particularly from the gaze perspective i think we're also seeing you know people going back to neuroscience and indeed trying to scale uh neuroscience so people like glassview provide a headband uh that panelists can wear and it's tracking uh brain activity uh you're seeing also a revival of of things that were i guess relatively popular in, in way back in the 1950s and 60s but again technology is allowing them now to scale things like galvanic skin response heart rate monitoring uh, is also being used in this and and then more recently um you've seen and and we'll talk a little bit about this the use of, of sort of su what you might call surrogate metrics so for example the use of <laughs> there we go excuse me computer heuristics so you know people like double verify integral ad science who are looking at the technology and trying to make inferences from the technology uh around attention and then of course there is good old-fashioned survey uh capture now i'm gonna have to speed up a little bit otherwise we won't get get through this um this is this is a chart that lumen uses to try to explain what we mean by uh attention and, and what might follow it at lumen calls the attention funnel so what it's basically saying is that you can start in effect uh with a thousand impressions uh there'll be a chunk of them that are viewable uh and meet the criteria that we know and love uh from the mrc in terms of a viewability standard but within that you know a significant chunk will not be seen uh so they were available to see and they weren't seen and a smaller number were viewed or seen now i'm just going to pause there for a second because if you think about this from an audience measurement standpoint and i think this is one of the things personally that is under under recognized in the whole uh process around attention measurement what we're moving here from is the gross opportunity to see which is what we've arguably traded on for the last 70, 80 years to something which is more equivalent to a net opportunity to see. So, so was the ad actually seen? And that has quite far reaching implications if, if we think about it. But anyway, so so just le I leave that with you because we'll, we'll come back, I dare say, and talk about that in, in the Q&A. So you've then got uh, impressions that are viewed. You then have a certain amount of time that they're viewed. <laughs> and then you can develop something that um lumen and a number of others call attentive seconds uh per thousand impressions so how what were they looking at the ad how long were they looking at the ad the other implication of this is that there are ads that that fall below the mrc uh threshold that do garner attention um so you know we we filter them out in the way that we uh trade media at least in, in, in the digital context today um but there are some impressions that that meet that you know fall below the mrc standard but are still you know looked at so we just need to be conscious of that uh when we start to think about how we measure durations uh, in audiences so let's talk about why people are doing this why do people bother uh doing this and i'm going to show you a number of uh case studies i've also put a link in here to a free document that 
that the attention council uh provides to to anybody that wants it uh which looks at outcomes uh measurements so this by the way is a book that we it was actually published about 18 months ago uh and we're in the process of uh, updating it um but it it looks at uh, about 50 or so different case studies um across different media channels across different methodologies uh and looks at, at how they they track from a, an outcomes perspective i'm just going to zap over that just suffice to say you know it we've got examples that work across all different parts uh of the funnel um and interesting that you you had somebody talking a bit later in the debate about mmm um and i think this is one of the the key questions from an attention point of view is you know does what impact does attention have as an input metric into mmm so you know if mmm has got gross in, you know reach points or gross impressions how do we how do we navigate that and get and refine that uh when we come to look at um uh the outcomes uh from that and so this is just a, a campaign here for a QSR restaurant uh, showing that if you optimized against GLPs and attention, uh, you were getting uh, about a 211% uh, correlation in terms of lift in, in brand awareness. Um, okay, now my computer's jammed. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, we've got an example here. Um, this is a, a media and technology case study. And this was somebody who, you know, is looking at comparing and contrasting methodologies, looking at, uh, you know, just looking at viewability optimization. So, you know, optimizing around the MRC standard and, and levels of viewability versus uh, optimizing on attention uh, based audiences. Uh, and again, we're seeing a much higher uh, conversion, uh, as it were, in terms of attention based on the attention uh gain uh by by working with um attention metrics as as one of the drivers and this one looks at sales this is a financial services um case study and and in effect what they did was they segmented the uh inventory for the audience that was exposed into four bins or four buckets you know a low attention through to a high attention and then plotted uh, those that are exposed into that higher attention, so people who are paying most attention um, in terms of upper quartile, uh, were two and a half times as likely to transact uh, than the low attention or the low, the lowest uh, quartile. Um, it, it's not. A, it's not. I haven't managed to find three uh, out of lots that I've man managed to find work. There are so many that work and. It, it's meaningful and it's re replicable and to an extent it's predictable um and one of the things that we can talk about <coughs> excuse me perhaps at the end is what's the definition of good yeah are, 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 is this all about getting as many attentive seconds as possible um or is it about getting the right number of attentive seconds for the job that we're trying to achieve from an advertising uh, objective um point of view um this is a uh, quite an interesting chart that um this is a piece of work that's been done by t vision and lumen the data is based out of the uk uh, and what what mike and jan from t vision here were trying to do was to put all of the different media formats onto a, like a common uh platform to line them up side by side and you know, I can imagine those of you that are working agencies, you have your own uh, lens or perspective uh, on this. You may have built your own proprietary uh, visions of this. Uh, but what this was doing was looking at different uh, formats. And this is looking at attentive seconds per thousand uh, impressions across the different formats. Now, I draw your attention to a couple of things. You know, yes, television does garner. Uh, a relatively high level of attention. Uh, that's not overly surprising. Uh, I don't think too many people will be shocked by that. You know, what's also interesting is is the YouTube when you look at a six second bumper versus a non skippable. Because clearly, um, if you've got a non skippable ad, the eyes are probably going to be on that screen. Uh, the question, of course, is 
what are the eyes looking at? You know, can you guess what they might be looking at on the non-skippable ad? Yes, you guessed it. They're probably looking uh, at the skip button, uh, waiting to waiting for the uh, compulsory time to to elapse uh, on that non-skippable. Now, I think this chart becomes even more interesting when you start to overlay cost data on it. So this is the same data, but pulling in uh, some of Ubiquiti's uh, pricing norms. So I, I don't know how familiar you are with Ubiquiti. They're probably in the region, but they do a kind of audit of uh, average uh, expenditure across different media types and channels. Uh, and so we've taken that data and then uh, integrated it with the cost per uh, attentive seconds to, to create that calculation. And, and, and the interesting thing here is that actually TV comes out extremely well uh, versus digital. And Ian, Ian quite rightly pinged me a question after I sent this deck to him and said, oh, is this all about CTV? And it, and, and it is partly about CTV. And that's another conversation that, that we can have. But it's also about linear television and, and you know, what, you know, where, where that goes. And, you know, I, I think it's quite interesting. And I, and I am very conscious that um, the industry in the region is looking at cross screen uh, measurement at the moment. And it's something that I'll, I'll come back to in a second. But, you know, there is this possibly is the if, if I've got one chart that explains why the TV networks are coming to have a conversation with me about joining the attention council, so this is probably it. Uh, because actually it's quite a good story uh, for TV. Okay, let's talk about state of the nation, what's going on. As I said, I'll try and take you through a very you know, basic uh, intro and then we'll talk about what, what's happening in the market. Now, this is something um, that caught my eye. I read it rather than heard it. Um, and this is Mark Zagorski, who is the CEO of Double Verify. Um, who is saying that at some point uh, we think attention will supplant viewability as the standard out there. And I guess what he is he's saying is that uh, perhaps viewability is not enough. And this is from obviously a company that's based most of its income off viewability and, and brand safety. Um, and, and it won't surprise you to know that Double Verify is also developing uh, an attention uh, measurement uh, solution. They've just appointed Daniel Slotweiner, formerly of uh, Meta and a number of other uh, publishers, as their head of um, uh, attention. So, so these guys are taking it quite seriously. But let's let's dig dig a little bit deeper. So that's that's Double Verify, and I'll come back and talk about it a bit more in a minute. Uh, this was a study that was done by Realize. Uh, Realize is one of the attention vendors in the United States. And they were they interviewed about 350 uh, research professionals and you know, media professionals, et cetera, in, in the industry. And we're really asking about the likelihood that you'll be using attention uh, met metrics in media uh, in the next 12 months. And you know, the level of agreement is not surprisingly uh, very high. Um, not a great surprise. Will it become a currency in the next three years? Uh, again, remarkably high levels of um, uh, agreement. Although, again, I, I, I'd like to countenance a little bit of caution. Um, and I, I'll, I'll come back and talk about that maybe in just a minute or so. Um, this isn't going to surprise you that um, as, as money at risk grows, I mean, it, you know, I've always believed that at the end of the day, measurement spins out of money at risk. People want to, you know, the more money I'm spending on a metric, the more I want to know what did I get uh, for that investment. And I also want to be sure that the investment that I'm making, if it's based on a metric, um, that metric is reliable, transparent um, and sustainable. And, and so, you know, it's probably not a surprise that, uh, you know, the MRC is beginning to engage um, directly in, in conversations around attention. Uh, we ran an event in New York uh, two weeks ago uh, where we had both George 
Ivy uh, and Ron uh, from MRC both actively participating, as indeed we had IAB US uh, on that platform. And, and they are alongside trying to manage everything that's going on in the television uh, measurement space in the United States, which is uh, a lot, um, are also trying to look at this as, as well. What they have done, and this was announced actually back at CES uh, in January, is that Double Verify have uh, actually had their methodology for attention measurement, which is based on uh, computer heuristics audited by the MRC. And the key word there is audited. Um, so the MRC, you know, key part of what they do um, is to set standards and obviously very uh, germanely, uh, they were directly involved in the creation of the viewability standards, which uh, are then subsequently audited. This is not setting a standard or definition. They have audited Double Verify, which means that Double Verify are doing the things that they say they do in order to create their three segments uh, of attention. We are still short uh, of an attention uh, auditable uh, metric. Now, one of the things that I've been very actively promoting, because I guess it may be my background, it may be because I come out of audience measurement, um, that uh, as much as I love case studies, and we've got so many case studies that show it works, uh, and I'm, by the way, I'm definitely not saying, please wait until we've, you know, perfected absolutely everything around the tension measurement. No, please use it. Please go out and use it. The case studies are, are very compelling. But if you want to build a currency, I would argue that you need more experimental design. You need a lot more work to truly understand uh, how attention is working, the differences in the methodologies, et cetera. Now, to that end, uh, the Advertising Research Foundation, which is a, a US-based uh, institution, neutral, not-for-profit, um, has kicked off uh, actually a global uh, initiative. Um, it's led by a chap called Ethan Rapp. It involves a number of the advertisers, including McDonald's and Mars. And, and they're doing a kind of a three-step, <coughs> excuse me, three-step process. Uh, firstly, they've asked all of the vendors uh, around the world to complete a kind of uh, long questionnaire, which is really about mapping the terrain of what do they do, how do they do it, uh, and that will get published uh, probably uh, at the back end of June uh, this year, and it's called Atlas. Uh, and that will be a free document that's available to all and sundry. Um, the second piece is quite interesting, and they're focusing initially on creative. So what they're going to do is to give common stimuli, uh, common uh, creative stimuli to each of the research solutions, and then to look at on a blinded basis, uh, and then to look at the outcomes from that and determine how, whether there's a convergence, whether they're completely all over the place, whether there's correlation between them, uh, et cetera. So that's quite an interesting uh, step. And they're, they're working with a number of academics to, to execute uh, on that. And then the third piece is, you know, much of the data that's collected is collected on you know, relatively small probabilistic samples, um, as, as you would expect. And there is obviously a step uh, that goes from, you know, having a panel of, you know, maybe 500 people or 300 people or 500, you know, 1000 people in a survey to then plotting that against 3000 web properties. Um, how does that how does that process work? How, how is that attribution or that that modeling exercise done? How reliable is it? How, you know, are there biases in it, et cetera? So that's the third component of that that piece of work. So I can't to, to me, this is the most important piece of work that's actually going on uh, around attention uh, right now in terms of its validity and, and and trying to answer Ian's question about are, are we heading um I'll also you know draw your attention to well, this is not the IAB um, task force looking at uh, attention so IAB US has kicked off 
again, a fair, what I would describe as a fairly ambitious uh, attempt to um, try and build a definition of attention, uh, to create some transparency around vendors, uh, to pull in client feedback, to try and create best practice. Interestingly enough, not trying to create a currency. So this has been led by Angie Yang um, at, at IAB uh, in the US. It's very ambitious. The reason I say it's ambitious is just simply because uh, IAB has been very open as to who they've invited in. So they have a, a lot of stakeholders with very different objectives and goals uh, in that process. So, you know, the tension counts as part of it. We want it to succeed. We want it, want to support it. But uh, as I said to Ian, and I, I think it was Mathieu, um, a few weeks back when we first mooted the idea of this uh, session, you know, I think part of my job is, is also to make sure that each of the different uh, stakeholders, and particularly by that, I mean, things like the different national and regional IABs are talking to each other um, because there's a there's a quite a lot of interest and a degree of duplication uh, of effort taking place across uh, the different geographies. Um, I don't have a simple answer to that other than to try and do my best to make sure everybody knows what everybody else is doing. Um, but it, it's just something to be aware of. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about this and, and drill down a tiny bit deeper into this piece around you know, currency and trading implications. <laughs> At a certain level, a currency um, is what two people agree on the buy and sell side to trade on. That's a currency. Um, now, okay, that's not what we would describe if we're talking about a people meter measurement solution or, a, you know, a, a digital panel or whatever it might be from a measurement solution where you, you often have multiple stakeholders in multiple or, or using the same data set to drive uh, those transactions. Um, there are people already today with whom you can go and trade and buy an attention guaranteed campaign. So folks like Teeds uh, are offering this at the moment. It's not in every market, it's in markets like Australia, or if you go to um, Cargo uh, in the US on the mobile side, uh, they're offering uh, guarantees against attention uh, delivery uh, within a campaign. I guess obvious things, you know, it can impact and, you know, does impact pricing. Generally speaking, if you talk to most media agencies and, and they're being honest and most of them are I'm pretty transparent about this, it it's not necessarily cheaper to go out and buy a high attention inventory. It's often more expensive. It's premium inventory for a reason, um, but it it does deliver, as we've seen already, in terms of outcomes. So that that is going to be um, that is going to be relevant. Um, it, how, one of the pushbacks you get, which I think is beginning to die away a little bit, um, is you know you we can't you know we're we're a media vendor we can't control the quality of the ad, no. You can't control the quality of the ad now. Um, so why should we be penalized? Will we be penalized by using attention as, as a metric? And the, and the answer is not, not necessarily. Um, the majority of the measurement systems are looking at the, the wrapper, if you like, the media around the ad rather than the ad. Uh, I don't think people are really talking about creating a creative attention trading metric they're talking about a media attention trading uh, metric i think the other thing that uh, again is is quite interesting and it, again i know you your debate's going to go and touch on this with mmms um but i do think as you know as we head to more outcome based trading i i see attention potentially playing a role in, in the gap between audience delivery and outcome uh i.e. what happened in the middle um, it's it's many years since one of the big agency whole co said we just need money in and money out. The problem with that was you know you don't know what exactly is happening. You don't know what to do different next time uh, you're running the campaign, or indeed it's in flight and you want to change it. Um, but you know I, d I do think that's that's quite interesting. Is is how does that sit there, including things like attribution? So you know we've got clients who do TV attribution who are looking at this saying well. 
you know, we ran the campaign, we delivered the ads, we delivered the audience. Uh, we've seen no movement in traffic to, you know, search or to the website. Just maybe there's something going on in the middle that we we don't get, and it could it could be attention related. I'm again. I mentioned cross screen measurement earlier in the in the presentation. I I think that you know these things are moving ahead. Uh, I mean it's it's challenging. It's politically charged. Uh, I think it's fair to say. Um, I can, it's so good not being a measurement company anymore. I can say these things out directly. Um, but it, it is politically charged. Um, but I believe that within the next 12 months, uh, in the UK in particular, I'm less sure about the US at the speed that that's moving. Uh, I think that the market will begin to see uh, TV, let's call it TV, and digital native digital impressions on the same measurement platform deduped in a reach and frequency analysis. So these, this is gonna happen. The question then becomes, okay, we've done that and we've created, you know, we've worked out there's excess frequency and we've readjusted or reinvested, whatever it might be. But I reckon within about three weeks, the question will be, what is the value of a TV impression versus the value of a digital video uh, impression? And I think that attention could be a lens through which, at least for at least for you know video-based uh, advertising, could be a lens uh, that is used to calibrate or weight some of that cross-screen uh, measurement. And then finally, you know, and and where are we? Oops, I've jammed. Oh, okay. Right, so one more go. Sorry, let me, my screen's completely jammed. Oh, there we go. And we just double check, I didn't have any other chance. So <laughs> suitable point for its jam uh, right at the end. So I, I know that was quite whirlwind and I know I covered a lot of bases, everything from, you know, what is it? Why do we do it through to, um, you know, what's going on in the industry and, and a few of my thoughts as to, you know, what some of the implications might be, but but thank you so much uh, for your your attention and for listening. And as Ian suggested, I'm open to take a few questions. Just uh, very briefly, Andy, there were two questions in the chat. Maybe we focus on those because in the interest of time, we, sure. we we are running short. The first one was just very briefly around the recency of the studies that you shared, uh, and the second one was about do you have demographic splits. So, for example, Gen Z versus other groups in terms of their their retention. Okay, so uh, that's a, a two great questions. So the case studies are about two two and a half years old. Um, we I've just put an outreach out to all the members and other stakeholders in the industry to provide updates. Um, so because there's clearly a lot more case studies that come in. Um, I haven't seen anything that yes is the answer you you could do that, but I've not seen anything that sort of generically looks at different demo groups. Um, I mean, there there is there are some biases anecdotally. So you know if you're looking at older viewers who are available to view in daytime and aren't moving out of the chair very much, yes, you're going to get high levels of uh, attention perhaps on TV in in daytime from some. Uh, older audiences, uh, younger audiences tend to be more fickle. Uh, let me see what I can find for you. I wonder, I, I, there probably is something tucked away, uh, which I'm very happy to share uh, with you if I can put my hands on it. Um, but yes, that, that that's that's where we are with that. Great, thanks very much, Andy. Um, I'm gonna hand over to Abdul Nabi now, who will take us through the panel discussion. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Andy. Hello, everyone, and thank you for paying attention. Um, as a quick intro, as we all know, the world of advertising has undergone significant changes in the recent years. With the rise of new technologies, platforms, changing consumer behavior. A couple of years ago, everyone started to talk about durability, brand safety, ad fraud. However, today, one of the most significant changes has been the growing importance of attention as a measurement concept in advertising. 
attention has always been important as we have seen in Annie's presentation and advertising, but the current landscape requires a more sophisticated understanding what is, on what is attention means, how to effectively capture and hold it. In today's world, where consumers are constantly bombarded with information and ads, attention has become a curse of valuable commodity. With this in mind, we have with us today a panel of experts to explore the concept of attention and advertising to help us gain a better understanding of what it means, could it be measured and how, and could it be impactful in driving marketing success. We will also try to answer one of the most important, we will try to answer one of the most important questions. Is attention a currency or a measure? So let us dive now into this fascinating and important topic together and explore the definition of attention with our panelists. So please help me welcome Mehdi, the Chief Digital and Marketing Officer of Oriel Middle East. Chris Salmi, the Chief Digital Officer of Omnico Group. Wasim al Saloon, the Managing Director of Insign United. Atiyah Yarak, the Group Senior Director for Data and Insight at Shreeli Group. And Shreem Mishra, the Research Director at Insight. So I would love to start with Mahdi and ask him, uh, how would you define attention as your target? How do you think, and do you think it's important for you as a marketer and as a brand? Hi, Abdel Nabi, and uh, hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Yes? Yep. OK, perfect, amazing. Cool, so happy to be with you uh, today. And um, honestly, it's, uh, it's a difficult question, especially go, uh, coming after what, uh, like the 40 minute uh, speech from, from Angie, very scientific and uh, super well uh, documented, but maybe my answer will, I'll like share just few perspectives more from the marketing background, right? And from, uh, which, which is a little bit my, um, yeah, my experience and uh, try to, um, to get, to give like a few more um, uh, element to what have been presented. But yes, for me, um, first of all, it's a very interesting um, topic that it's still quite new for, for all of us as uh, advertisers. And um, for me in specific, been reading resources. We had a few discussions with partners here in the region about, uh, about attention as a, as a topic, but probably yes, we still need to do more. So that's why honestly, the, the first part of the, this um, call was really, uh, really interesting for me. So uh, I would say for me, um, attention, I always couple this, this concept with, uh, with the concept of relevance. And uh, really uh, for me, they go uh, both hand in hand um, in, and the, the ultimate goal potentially is obviously to reduce um, ad spend uh, wastage. Uh, we talk a lot about sustainability uh, for the environment, for the planet. But probably for, and it's by the way, also could be linked in a different perspective later on, but how we can reduce all this wastage, especially for groups like, like ours, uh, where we don't have, uh, I'm like, we're like in a lucky position where we have a lot of resources, we, have, we can activate all touch points, uh, all audiences, and then um, it's, it's rather like a, how we can be more efficient then if we can afford to, uh, we can afford not to be efficient, I would say, but we have to be more efficient for, for multiple reasons. And um, if maybe just to be a little bit more specific for me, attention really um, falls uh, in between um, the two paradigms. One is obviously the couple again of uh, viewability reach that was, I think like I've been in the industry for the last 17 years. So that was a little bit the, the, the base and the DNA for especially mass, mass market brands. Like yeah, you, you just uh, optimize, focus on reach and the viewability. Uh, and then like when digital marketing started, that, that was a little bit the obsession. But then with in, over the last two, three years, this shifted uh, after COVID and with all the performance marketing to conversion. And I think, yes, we lost just something in the middle between reach and conversion where uh, attention should play attention should play a, a role, like an important role uh, of, uh, and I think Angie explained this a little bit as well, where he said, there's probably something missing in the middle. Um, and uh, uh, the way how we can be drive more attention will probably help us to optimize both um, the visibility, the, sorry, the viewability and the reach. So, we don't, so probably sometimes we don't have to go that broad and then conversion, yes, instead of just uh, washing audiences to, to get more ROAS, to get more uh, sales, uh, there's probably like uh, better marketing to do in the, in, the, in the middle. And I think this is even more important, obviously, with the, with the privacy uh, 
concerns that the consumers have. And um, like uh, going into a cookie list world, uh, the iOS update was tough on, for everyone from, from like tech partners to advertisers to agencies, etc. So, so this will be more and more like a challenge to track signals and be able to, uh, to be efficient. And um, yeah, so I would just maybe conclude and answer the second part of your question by saying that the it, attention is just the way how to uh, get get rid of lazy marketing for us advertisers and uh, it's like just not uh, produce uh, as many assets and produce and target as many audiences and let's see what's gonna work and let's optimize but really have this uh, yeah, this focus on how we can be more contextual more relevant more targeted how we can use uh, zero party data and uh, be more native less intrusive as well um yeah so like i think there's a lot of things that honestly i'm not super fan of <laughs> we can discuss this later on like uh, uh, rich media being like yeah just putting the ad in front of someone to get uh, and, and call this attention as well is probably wrong so i don't know like we we'll probably debate this on the on the yeah on the on the currency or measurement part but uh, yeah this is it uh, i would say for me just to to give a little bit more uh, perspective and maybe i can just finish with one example to be a little bit more relevant to beauty because you asked about, about beauty so i am a bit too long and i know we short in time but like just i, I just gonna be a little bit more specific on this one so on on beauty um, uh, in for l'oreal for example like we have been developing ai and ar solutions uh, uh, since uh, like four or five years when we acquired Multiface, a tech company, it's the first time we have 30 brands and one tech company. That's the portfolio of our of what we, we, we own. And the idea was just to get zero party data to be able really to understand skin type, hair type, the makeup um, uh, aspirations for consumers so we can drive better attention when we uh, retarget them or when we build ads rather than just, as I said, like be massive, spray and pray. Voila. Amazing. Uh, that's a great idea from a marketeer, to be honest. Uh, I would like to move to Chris now. Um, I would like to take your point of view, Chris, on how do you think we need to measure attention? And is it something we are able to measure at this stage? Yeah, th thank you. Um, look, it, <clears throat> it's a really, really interesting, interesting question. It's one that, so, so we, you know, I, I can speak from an Omnicom perspective. We've been, uh, conducting tons of measurement studies now for about four years um, and working with, with some of the companies that Andy mentioned. So the likes of uh, Lumen, uh, Amplified Intelligence and the likes. Um, and uh, we, we conducted the first, our first MENA, MENA study in, in 2020, 2022. And the purpose of that was to create um, local benchmarks, but we were really, really building and trying to verify, you know, four years worth of learnings uh, that we have as Omnicom around attention. Um, and one of the things that we found was uh, outside of establishing benchmarks for each channel, there was a remarkable level of consistency in the findings that we've gathered, gathered over the last four, four years, if you like. Um, one of the big, big findings that we found is that there's, and Karen Nelson Field talks about this, uh, and she'll talk about it at length, which is that there's this idea of att attention hierarchy. So, you know, when you're looking at uh, attention, what are the things that really, really drive it? And it's important to take an evidence-based approach to this and not a guess or what you think. And, and one of the things that we found over multiple, multiple studies is there is this idea of a hierarchy. What are the factors that drive how many seconds of attention? And what's been really, really well understood now, I think, is the, the hierarchy follows something like this. The first thing that determines that the biggest factor is the platform that you're on. It's the platform that governs everything. Regardless of all other factors, there are always, you know, the attention you get has a bandwidth. There's upper and lower limits. And the biggest contributor, that's the, the platform. Sorry for all the creatives out there, but that's just what the evidence is saying. It's the platform is the number one driver. And it's evidence-based. It's, 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 you know, think about it, right? So if you're on a scrollable form of media and you're scrolling along, no matter how good your creative or your audience targeting is going to be, the biggest driver is the nature of the platform itself. So there are that there's a there's a plus or minus that you can work with to optimize. Platform number one. Second is the type of ad format you use. The third is the context. You know what's your ad appearing against. There was a question on demographics that was really interesting. That's that's probably next on the ladder. Who you're advertising to. But the interesting thing about that is what's what. Uh, is that as humans, we're more alike than we are different. 
and creative was the last piece, but creative is the piece that you can control. Now, in order to be able to, you know, and get, gain these insights, you've got to think, who am I going to use to measure and what parties? And, and there's so many different measurement part, partners out there. There's people who use, who do panel-based primary research, like the likes of Amplified Intelligence and Lumen, who do panel studies. And that's what we commissioned to do, a, a, a big panel study for Middle East and North Africa. And then you've got on the other end of the scale, you've got people like Double Verify that use purely device-based measurement. So they're taking signals from your phone, but they're not really using doing eye tracking studies. And this is this is where the kind of the the, the complexity um, in 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 the space is arising. That you've got different companies who all have different methodologies, right? And so you've got double verifiers using signals as a proxy, and on the other side, you've got parties like Amplified Intelligence and Lumen that are doing panel studies to establish benchmarks. Um, and so, so my answer is. It, when you're in get, when you start out on this journey of trying to measure and understand uh, attention, you you probably don't want to limit your partners that you work with to one. You you probably want to start looking at, um, you probably want to start using different partners. Um, use use device based partners. Use partners like Amplified Intelligence and Lumen, and try and understand what commonalities you see. But this touches really back to the point of of currency too. And I'm going to finish off with this because I don't want to take up too much real estate on the call, but uh, this is one of the problems and difficulties in how, you know, why there, why, why it's, you know, there is no MRC accredited way of measuring this is because you've got all these different players in the market who all have different methodologies. It, it's not as easy as, as, as um, measuring something like the ability where if you look at IES or, you know, all, all the different parties, they all more or less follow the same you know, technology standards and ways of tracking. So there is an element of uniformity. They're all doing different things. We're all trying to achieve the, the trying to understand the, the very same thing, which is attention is, were, was someone looking at my ad that was on the screen? Was it active attention rather than passive attention? Passive being, I was looking at the screen, but not looking at the ad. Great, sir. thank you, Chris. Uh, I would love to hear to move from from this point to Matthew directly, and yeah. take, uh, what's your point of view when it comes to measuring attention? At the end of the day, Chris has said there is no one size fits all. Uh, all the, uh, there are too many uh, stakeholders on uh, on the table. Uh, we don't have a clear currency or definition. However, from mm -hmm. what is point of view, how we are tackling this element until we have a clear definition or a clear currency, and are you ready? to send on attention metrics. Yeah, definitely. Again, like I would I would agree with Mehdi, like I'm delayed it properly in terms of defining the attention. And I'm gonna also comment on two points that Mehdi mentioned and also Chris at the same time. And then to give you the, the perspective of the publisher and how we stand from an attention perspective. When Mehdi talked about the creative or the communication or the marketing strategy, right? So creative, yeah, plays a major role. And if I want to look and how we used to, to measure attention 15 years ago, probably when we used to look at the TVC, it's going to cut through the clutter. What are the elements they're going to recall it? Is ad recall a major component of to drive an attention weight or an attention score? But then, okay, fine, ad recall, it's, uh, it's also ringed to, uh, to reach. But is it su sufficient enough to say, what are the elements that you call in the ad? Start creating this level of weight to say, you know what? It cuts through the clutter, it cut the attention, it got the focus of the viewer, for example. And then here you go, we can go. But then it's important to put it in the right context, because again, even if you have the most amazing creative, which again, it's tested properly from an attention perspective, Mars did a, an amazing, I would say, exercise, extensive exercise, we realized to, to, to lay it to, 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 in a way, correlate between attention and sales at the same time. But also it becomes more of the context, right? Because again, if I'm a publisher, I don't, I don't have a control about uh, what comes to the creative itself. To, to, to drive better outcome. But for me, if I put it in the right context, the right placement, I, I, would, I would call it, you'll bring the halo effect of the platform. Because again, when you talk about the platform, which we need to assess it from a mindset perspective, because also the neuroscience comes into place. Because if I'm watching, let's say, a long form video content, I'm making the time, I'm more attentive from a mindset perspective. So even if I'm attentive to the, to the content itself, 
it will generate an attentive on the on the ad that's that's getting played for instance for instance so we have the context we have the audience if i go for a niche targeting for example let's say precision targeting for instance with the right creative that will drive better attention definitely because it's a combination between the platform the audience that the audience that you're targeting and the creative itself that will drive a better a, a better a better outcome so these will play will play a major role in in in, in a way in driving uh, or navigating when it come when it comes to attention on the publisher side from our from from our perspective we're also testing now we started testing with amplified intelligence chris already mentioned they've they're building their benchmarks at the same time because for us if i look at it from a research perspective when it comes to building benchmarks we cannot just run with any kind of benchmark that's run across the us or let's say europe to, to apply it in our region because again you have to look from left to right right to left placements the the kind of the kind of content that that's paid and that plays a major role from an eye gazing perspective if you want to measure it so we're, we're gonna start testing our with amplified intelligence we're working with women at the same time and real eyes to, to creating and setting benchmarks for, for for the region because to be fair if you want to be fair for every single player that's playing in this industry being a publisher or the social platform or a video on demand platform or it or it's a tv station or a radio or or a music streaming platform, you have to give each a weight in terms of the behavior of such of such a platform. What might apply on social won't be it won't be applied on when it comes to music streaming. Using streaming does not capture your your eye. It captures let's say the listen, this listening behavior is correlated to different let's say metric. So so that's why it is important for us to start looking at it by platform and weigh the value and how each platform drives a better attention because to unify. A singularity when it comes to, to to creating a single scoring element, I don't think it's fair for for any of of, of the of the players in in, uh, in this ecosystem, which in a way tells us like what is what is it from a big question in terms of currency, right? So we all talk about attention and driving it to the currency. You've seen it with Andy, you may talk about it and Chris. I think we're 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 far away from creating a currency. I guess if we stick to measurement, nail it down, understand the methodologies, understand. How each, how each, in a way, supplier is driving attention measurement to better understand the kind of outcome that's derived from it. Then we can start talking about creating a body that's going to govern the attention. Because again, if I want to create a currency, I need Mehdi to be on board, I need Chris to be on board, you need to be on board, you need to get all the players to be on board from the creative, the measurement partners, and so on to align on. This is a standard definition or standard framework that we need to work against. Do you know what? To give a proper value for the publisher, for the social platform, for music listening platform, and so on. Great. This is taking honestly a, a nice, uh, I would say, route and direction for the conversation. Uh, Wasim, uh, we have heard Chris talking about the role of media and role creation. Mathieu is talking about the placement. Uh, back in days when we were used to, uh, to produce 30 seconds and 60 seconds on TV, and we put it on TV and say we want to break into the clutter. Coming from creative background, how would you look at it like, do you really see that media is the key player uh, to drive attention or is it the creative or is it both of them? Uh, a very interesting question. And as you can see, a very hot topic uh, across uh, you know, many stakeholders here. Um, you know, in our opinion, and as we stand, as Nissan United is fully integrated between different uh, different uh, stakeholders and different functions. Um, you know, at some point, everything we do is about how we communicate with people, how we tell a story, right? And not any story, a story that is delivered to the right audience, as everyone was seeing, through the right platform, through the right channels in the right format, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone here knows that. However, uh, it's not a function of one particular exercise or one particular habit. It is a rigorous process of delivering the work across the full value chain. And that full value chain is not only one pillar. It's all the pillars working together as a perfect machine from the inception of the brief to the delivery to the measurement later on, passing through the production. And this is where the creative idea comes in place is to drive people and get people on the hook 
So it's very important that all of these parties you're seeing work together seamlessly to deliver uh, what we call at Nissan United a creative precision marketing team that eventually serves not only the brief, and we're uh, going to discuss a little bit the importance of the brief, but also the most important thing, which is driving the right message and telling the right story to the right audience and increasing the attention. Now, I don't see this as only a debate or a, a topic with two parties where you have the creative and the media. No, I want to also take this to another depth, to another dimension with uh, Mathieu over here and everyone here uh, across this panel is the importance of marketeers, the importance of brands, and the importance of clients to adopt this approach to focus more on attention from the inception of the brief. And I believe this is where it all starts. If we want to start by having more attention, driving more attention, we need to start from the moment uh, a campaign or a story is incepted and then later on delivered, measured through publishers or through different uh, platforms. That's a great. Uh, I know we are, we are all conscious of time. I would like to jump directly to Shui and ask her, in my point of view, honestly, the most important question. We define attention, we are doing attention, we are optimizing for attention. Does attention have an impact across the funnel nowadays? All the brands are looking at KPI driven search. Uh, my campaign, yes, it might be an upper, low, mid, or lower funnel, but it has to have an impact on lower funnel, be it a purchase instance or as well as direct sales on a D2C website. How do you see it from Nielsen's perspective, especially you are uh, definitely you are running thousands of MMMs every year for, for the whole, for all the industry? So, how do you see it impacting the full funnel? Thank you. Um, so with the MMM approach, as Andy's already said, attention as a metric is still evolving. So, you know, at Nielsen, we have focused on viewability until now because that became the currency following all the auditing, et cetera. But attention for us then becomes a quality metric. It's all about quality. So if you added the MMM models, all it's going to do is add more robustness. It will allow us to make it more granular it's not going to hinder the current models. Like I, I think it was in the discussion yesterday where I was saying that if we add more independent variables, it's not going to, you know, suddenly say, it's not suddenly going to break anything. So I think adding attention as a metric in the MMM models is certainly going to be beneficial, not just for people that are using it, but also the whole user experience then becomes sort of focused more on quality. And again, that is all sort of, you know, going to be able to link together across the touch points. I mean, my colleague Amira is there if you want more technical details, but I represent sort of all of the Nielsen world in terms of the overall view. So that is my sort of personal opinion on it. Thank you very much for that. So I would like to end up with, uh, uh, with me. Uh, as a marketeer, after we have heard the point of view with, from everyone, from the publisher side, from the media side, and from the creative and measurement side, as a marketeer, after you have heard all these points of views, and after Andy's presentation, how would you look at it, and what would you advise as a word, uh, and, and a sentence, let's say, for, to all the other marketeers, brands, advertisers, um, on attention in specific, how to move forward, how to opt in, at least, especially we are in a test and learn environment till now when it comes to attention. How would you advise everyone to approach this? I don't know if I have an advice in specific and uh, it would be too pretentious obviously uh, with such a complex topic to, to, to give one, but I think probably I've been reading the chat questions as well and a few comments. And um, like the out, if I have just maybe one, um, one element uh, to, to talk about, that we need all to keep in mind. Like I feel like we are like the the industry is very much focused on uh, on metrics and on platforms and on like uh, creating something exactly to fill this gap uh, that privacy created uh, to yeah just to, to I would say like to 
to listen to the debate from ROAS and from from uh, viewability to something else. And um, in this in this whole discussion, we we are lacking a lot of consumer centricity. So yeah, I think. Uh, Consumer are far away smarter than what we what we think. They are much more in control today. And um, again, like if we want to be like compliant to the to the privacy codes and expectations from consumers, we will probably like a lot of solutions will not be uh, efficient. One cannot be executed. Uh, we might be executed today, and uh, might not be uh, tomorrow. And this is exactly what happened to so many metrics. Uh, that we had in the industry since the beginning of currencies as well. And we lost them one by one simply because consumers are a little bit more in control. So I would just say like, yeah, adding like a consumer simple uh, view on uh, what, how consumer wants to engage with brands rather than just trying to force impressions on this consumer every time and attention and seconds of, uh, from, from his time is, is probably maybe the, the other element that would be very interesting to to, to, to add, and I feel like yes, some publishers obviously are doing it better than the others, some platforms are doing it better than the others, some brands are doing it better than the others, and uh, probably that's the ultimate currency that used to be there 60 years ago and will continue to exist, but yeah, the, the, the rest would, it would be always challenging and uh, as the, in this new context and new codes. Great. Uh, thank, you, thank you everyone for paying attention. Um, one last or to everyone on the chat because uh, I've seen lots of comments or questions on the chat requesting for, uh, I would say, deeper discussions when it comes to attention. This is one of many attention systems. This is the start. Uh, we are not dead yet, as Mathieu has said, and Chris, it's not a current system now. Uh, let's start measuring before we start buying your attention. Uh, let's define a common factor, I would say, or denominator when it comes to attention. Uh, we need all the stakeholders to be involved. Let's keep this discussion. Uh, as I said, it's one of many. Uh, lots of the other sessions, webinars, and thought leadership will come this year from the IED attention work stream. Uh, until then, keep paying attention to the attention. Amazing message. Thank you very much. <laughs>